Hi there, I wanted to put together a little video here. Um, I'm going to start going through some of my old units I have sitting on my shelf and I'll start making videos of them as I have time. Uh, we got a lot of units that come into us for repair and uh, I collect a lot of these old fence chargers. It's hard to get your hands on some of them. Sometimes they kind of get, get kind of expensive and if you really, really like them, you sometimes have to pay a pretty big penny for them. But, uh, this is going to be just a little show-and-tell video, basically, of an old unit. This is an old metal case unit made by Electroline, which are no longer in business. Um, it's pretty cool. I, I just drilled the rivets. I've never have seen the inside of it until now. I've had this thing for like five years, and it's always worked. And it's held together with rivets all the way around this case. It looks like a little old, like, like a, like a, you know, fire... You know, firefighter helmet, basically what I always thought it looked like. But um, here's some of the um, the six volt unit, and uh, this is the uh, back side of it here. It's a, you know, it's a six volt battery operated. If you looked here, is manufactured in 1944, um, which is a year before World War II ended. So it's pretty pretty slick uh, to have a unit that old. And the neat thing about this thing is it still works. Um, it's a mechanical device on the inside, so I'll show you that uh, inside there. But it says it's a model number 410, uh, made in the USA, everything like that. And you see this little, it looks like it has a speaker, but it is, it's a delusion basically, but uh, there's a clicking device and a little mechanical wheel that goes back and forth inside here. And that's just to let some of the sound come out so you can hear it better basically. But um, it mounts on the wall like this, so it would sit like that on your wall and, uh, you know, and click. But we'll take the case off here. It only comes off so far because the wires that are inside here are very short. Um, but that's what it looks like on the inside. It has a little wheel here. If I can get the wire to stay off of it. That goes back and forth and, and clicks. So basically does that and every time it makes contact with voltage coming in it uh you know comes out and goes to your fence and ground and uh it's pretty cool to see these old mechanical electric fence boxes that you know that were made um here's what the other side looks like that's what the other side looks like inside here this does it does have a stamp in here may 2nd or May 21st, 1948. So, at the possibility that this unit, the patent on it was 1944, but was built in 1948, but you can barely see it right there. I don't even know if I can get that to show up or not. 1948, right there. Right, right there. It's kind of showing up. Okay. But you have the capacitive discharge. There's a little mechanical wheel in here that makes uh, contact to a set of points on it. And the reason why it's 6 volt, because back in the day, you know, there, everything was 6 volt. Tractors were 6 volt and everything. Later on, they eventually got conversion kit things. You could um, get rid of those generator deals and put a 12 volt battery in them. But uh, that's why they made a lot of these... Um, units uh, were six volt power because everybody had six volt batteries laying around now over here is um uh your two fence connections you got a normal contact and a dry soil contact i guess if you had real dry situation you can hook it up to this terminal here and on this side you could hook up two six volt batteries to it you know and, and basically in parallel so uh that way you get a little bit longer life before it ran ran the battery down but your ground for your energizer or fence charger, whatever you want to call this thing, um, ground went here as well as your negative terminal of your battery went here at the same spot. And then your two positives of say two batteries, if you wanted to run two batter two six volt batteries on at the same time, would go one would go here, one would go here on the positives, and then your negative on both batteries would connect here. Um, or you could just run one battery, one, you know, positive here, negative here, or positive here, negative there, whatever you decided to do. Um, so, I've got the liberty of uh, of having a power supply that I can set at like six, you know, six and a half, seven volts, six point eight volts on. I'm just going to hook it up here, 
and then I'm going to lift this case off here so we can see this little wheel mechanism move on. I just want to blow. It's pretty clean on these. I mean, I, like I said, I've had this thing for about five years and I've never opened it uh, until today when I drilled these rivets. I was like, man, I really want to see the inside of this thing. Um, it's got that, you know, got that old smell to it, old metal smell to it. And that or it's a lead paint. I don't know. <laughs> it could be lead paint that I'm smelling. But it's really neat on the inside. You have a little contact point up in here. Uh, a little ribbon thing come off the transfer back over here. There's a spring mechanism right there that that uh, that, that thing bounces off against. So it's an electromechanical device. So it's pretty cool. So I'm going to power it up here and we'll see it take off. Well, it should take off. Hold on. Let me, let me play with this for a minute. I must have, I may have messed something up when I pulled this case off. Give me just a second here. I, I just had a bad connection. I had to fool around with it for a minute. But I had to, just had a bad connection up in here and inside here. I pulled on it. The wire kind of slipped a little bit. So now I'm power my turn my power supply on. Pretty cool looking. I'm gonna I'm mount my camera here. Pretty slick, isn't it? That is so neat. What's that happened? I cranked the voltage up just a little bit. No, it's going to go too much higher. See that little... Let me turn it off for just a second. It's that little coil thing there. You would see those a lot inside of like old watches and stuff like that. I uh, can't remember what they call that deal. That little mechanism. Whoop, that little mechanism right there. But it expands. You know, get it gets bigger and goes back and smaller as it goes back and forth. It's supposed to help recoil it back there. So I can't remember what they call those, but you'll see those in a lot of old clocks and watches. Pretty neat. You gotta sit, send this video to some of your friends that, that like old electrical things, old mechanical things, uh, just to share it to them and show it to them. This is pretty, pretty slick. Um, I'm gonna turn it off real quick. And I'm gonna mount my phone back up here again. And what I wanna do is I'm gonna grab a jumper lead here attach it over here to my ground and then I'm gonna get real close to these two terminals over here and, and you'll see that the spark it puts out is not that big not very strong but probably for what people were dealing with back then it probably did just fine uh, for what they were dealing with so we're gonna go first one I'm gonna go to I'm gonna go to the dry or not uh, sorry the normal fence condition I guess Here, I'll have to zoom it in. It's not a very big spark. But I'll put my fence tester on there in a second. I think it puts out like 7,000 volts or 6,000 volts or so. Okay, so no, not very much power there, but... I'm not going to put my finger on it, so I'll just take my, ooh, that's a little bit bigger. On on the uh, dry soil, that thing will shoot about an eighth inch spark out of it. And maybe an eighth of an inch, pretty darn close. And that's about uh, less than a sixteenth. Turn it off for just a second. I'm gonna hook up my 
Now this might not, oh, wait a minute, hold on, I can do it another way. I'm, as I put this meter on here, but I last, this electromechanical meter that I've got, I was going to hook up to it, zoom out here, I hooked this meter up to it, um, but it uh, is mechanical as well, so I actually put the load to the unit, so I don't want to load it down, because if I do, I'll show it to you anyways, but if I do it, 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 it barely pulses it, because it loads it down and it's barely, it goes like this, really quick. I got a Zariba fence tester, but I'll show you the mechanical one, mechanical fence tester first. And um, I'll put on the, this one here. And see how, it, how it's spinning now. Once I put this on there, it's probably going to load it down. I'm going to load it down too much, but we're only, now we're getting about 3,000 volts out of it. Now we're going to go to this side. I thought this would have loaded it down. But you know, you're sending about 4,500 volts out of that one. And now we'll just kind of compare. We'll put a digital one on there, and we'll see what it reads. Four thousand volts there. All right, let me take. I don't like these Zariba testers. You gotta wait for them to shut off to get another test out of them. Whoops. Hold on, try this again. Oh, I hate these testers. You gotta wait. Put the ground back on. Now, it's not getting good reading with this stupid tester. I, the, the tester I like to use is my Gallagher tester because I don't like these stupid Zariba testers. Uh, I have another little tester I guess I could hook up to. It's a little multi light. Red snapper tester I've got. It has it goes up to eleven thousand five hundred volts with a set of lights. So we'll see what it reads on it. All right, turn it off for a second so I can hook up my leads. I don't want to bite me on accident. First, we're going to go over here to the normal soil condition side. I think we're getting, you know, it's barely flickering the 4,000 volt light. All right, turn it off. Hook it up to the dry soil condition tab. Lights are a lot brighter out of that too. There must be more current coming to it. And it's barely flickering the 7500. So it must be between 4000 and 7500 volts, I guess, is what that is. But that's a little red snapper fence volt tester that I, I've had for years. It's pretty cool. It's an old plastic case unit. It's really neat little deal. I like it. Turn it off. But anyways, hopefully you, you guys like that video and, you know, if you're just viewing this for the, just to look at it and everything, I appreciate that. Uh, you know, hit the thumbs up button. Uh, you can subscribe to our channel. I mean, we're a repair place. I just work on these things. Uh, now these old ones like this, you know, we try to work on this stuff, but it's getting harder and harder to work on old ones like this. So typically what this would end up turning into, if it was not repairable, um, is just a wall ornament, a conversation piece, it basically. But luckily, 
This thing's uh, 70 some years old and it's still working. So, uh, pretty cool. Um, but I'll start making more videos of uh, units that we've got sitting around here that I've got a I got one unit it's in a glass mason jar looking thing uh it's called a there's two of them I got a shock stock and I've got a true test um they're both in mason jars and one of them still has a the decal on it and you can still read it it says 1941 on it so it's even older than this one and it's electrical it's not mechanical it's, it doesn't have this wheel and it. it's a six volt unit i think as well and i think it still works well at least it used to still work or used to work but share this to your friends you know fan i'm sure somebody out there would get a kick out of this thing being able to see an old unit like this work but what i'm going to do is i'm just going to put little um couple of screws in it, maybe one over here and one over there just to um hold it together um, you know, this is actual steel. It's not like a just flimsy aluminum, flimsy steel that they use on later units. It's uh, kind of got some thickness to it. So I don't know if I'll be able to uh, just put that screw in there or not. I might have to bolt it together. But um, well, it'll go through. I just got to pull it up off the table. But this is how I'm going to put it together for now. Get the... Actually, I'm just going to put the one screw in it. Well, no, I better put two of them in there just because the other side's wanting to come apart. But if you're looking at this video for a possible, just for a repair standpoint, you know, go to our websites down below. It's uh, fencerfixer.com. I'll put a link down in the description just so you can see it. I don't want to get to put it in by hand. Shit. Ooh, I need a bigger hole or a smaller screw. But anyway, that that's an old unit there. Electro line. So, but anyways, I told you another video of an old unit like this one or something like it. Or um, you know, a repair video, how to video, show and tell, or one that we worked on and how it works and the testing of one and the features of one. We will see y'all later.